Wikipedia is known by everybody. But it will be even as hard to find people that will know what does it mean, Wikipedia? What, what, is, uh, what is the concept of Wikipedia? How does it work? Is it, um, is it working with, um, with some kind of top-down organization? Or is it, um, many people don't know that it's very, uh, it's only volunteers writing for Wikipedia, and it's volunteers taking the pictures and Wikimedia comments, and it's volunteers editing in Wikidata, and producing all the other projects among uh, the Wikimedia family. So information on that is one of the, our first hurdles we have to, to take. The next one, is, oops, the next one is working with volunteers. Um, to us, it seems to be such a natural thing. Well, na volunteers, I mean, uh, everybody knows a volunteer or is uh, himself a volunteer, but in many GLAM institutions, at least in Germany, working with volunteers is reduced to the fact that, oh, they consider volunteers as donators. So uh, they give money but that they could do something else, it's not very common among German um, GLAM institutions. So here we do have to, to find a way to show them how beneficial it could be to collaborate with volunteers. The next obstacle is working with free licenses. Free licenses, um, we all know them and we can um, uh, talk about it by, by heart, but for many GLAM institutions, copyright is a big issue and they feel rather insecure about uh, the use of free licenses. And the next, uh, the fourth obstacle is how to work with free content. What does it mean, free content for a GLAM institution? How could they apply free content? How could they use the free content? And how could they make um, their content free to make it accessible and reusable for others. So um, throughout the years we have started to uh, address those four obstacles. Uh, first one was information. So uh, we have um, a small selection here of arguments that are useful and talking to GLAM institutions in order to overcome their reluctance to collaborate with us. Um, then we, uh, together with uh, lots of GLAM partners, we're creating a, a conference called Shaping Access, Zugang Gestalten, which is taking place every year in November, which is a very good platform for us to present what we are doing, uh, to get in touch with GLAM institutions and uh, to discuss how we could uh, further our uh, cooperations. We also are doing uh, smaller formats where we invite GLAM institutions uh, in a sort of a saloon, the ABC saloon, um, to talk about different topics such as free content or free licenses. And they're well attended, especially on online as we stream them and you can then later on see them um, in YouTube. We have those formats collaborating with volunteers which is the Glam on Tour format. We just had our 11th Glam on Tour station. Um, the Cool Tour and the Wikiversum Weltcafé. I'm going to explain it here further. The Glam on Tour stations, we also I uploaded the presentation on comments and you will be able to follow the links. Um, we had 11 Glam on Tour stations in 11 different um, uh, Glam institutions throughout Germany. And basically it's a... Um, uh, a format where GLAM staff or volunteers from the GLAM are collaborating with volunteers from um, Wikipedia and they are doing a photo session together or an editaton, they listen to talks and mainly it is to establish relations in between the GLAM institutions and the volunteers. We will be able to hear about that more. Um, taking an account that many GLAM institutions think, oh God, a whole weekend with volunteers, that's shocking. <laughs> uh, we have de um, developed a little sister of the GLAM on tour, which is the cool tour. And in many uh, other regions, this one is called uh, like a photo safari. We will visit a, um, a GLAM institutions on, let's say, an afternoon, and they will provide us with free in-tray tickets um, and, uh, and the permission to take photographs uh, that could be uploaded. 
So, um, um, and maybe they get a guided tour as well. So this is a very good starting point for, um, well, if, if they find it's too tough to start with a weekend, start with an afternoon. And then for conferences, um, we have created the format, the Wikiverse World Cafe, which um, is um, basically an introductional talk. And afterwards, the, uh, the participants, from starting from maybe 50, 60 participants up to 200, will uh, be able to get to know the three most important or the biggest um, Wikimedia projects, such as Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, and Wikidata. Uh, in a direct uh, dialogue with volunteers. So, uh, and after 20 minutes, they have learned something about Wikipedia. They, there's a bing bong, and then they go on to the next table, and then they learn about Wikidata, maybe start to do their first edit in Wikimedia Commons on the third table. So within an hour, they're able to get to know the basic ideas of those um, uh, projects. Then, as I told you, there's the third field with free licenses. Licenses is a very complicated matter for many. They, pe they believe they have to study law in order to be able to understand how to apply it. And as many people don't study law, um, they feel that, oh, I can't, I can't deal with this license kind of thing. And they say, well, I, I better refrain from doing anything with it. And, and the stuff keeps um, unfree. So um, together with the German aggregator for Europeana, the Deutsche Digitale Bibliothek, we have um, developed a little training, um, saying, uh, CC Change Your Mind, and uh, together with uh, UNESCO, we have um, um, written an open content guide. Oh, this was too fast. Yeah, CC Change Your Mind is a workshop that consists in three parts. The first part is um, uh, an introduction talk by the, uh, the lawyer of the Deutsche Digitale Bibliothek, focusing very much on public domain, what is CC BY, and the issues when, for instance, for uh, legal reasons, as you are not allowed to copy um, um, banknotes, um, you, you can't put it under public domain or free license or because of privacy reasons, you have to um, think of um, how to deal with the content. And then we have a little role play, like the group uh, of maybe let's say 50 people is divided into uh, smaller groups and they choose by, by chance a role. Uh, we normally give them a button in blue or a button in red or in green and then um, they find out that if they choose the green button they will be the um, the promoter of free licenses and if they choose the, the red button they become the opponent of free licenses and with the blue button they are the moderator so uh, that makes helps them to change their mental attitude towards it because maybe by chance somebody that is more reluctant for free licenses all of a sudden gets into the role to be the promoter of free licenses and that helps them to change their mentality, their mindset on thinking of free licenses because we have found that very often it is not just legal things, it is more like make your mind flip and towards free licenses. Um, yeah, and then we have this um, open content guide. Um, we brought some copies on in English as well. There's uh, uh, an Indonesian version by now, and yesterday there was a guy from India um, that said, oh, we're going to translate that into, um, I don't remember if it was Urdu or one of the other major Indian languages. Um, we produced that together with the UNESCO, and it gives you uh, a through like a, a practical guide, what kind of free licenses are available, um, how to be able to identify them, and how you make sure that um, applying the license, um, uh, others will be able to realize it is free. Yeah, working with free content is a big issue as well. Um, we have developed uh, two approaches there as well. One is um, Coding Da Vinci the uh, culture hackathon, which we are not doing on our own, but 
collaborating with the Open Knowledge Foundation, the Deutsche Digitale Bibliothek, the German aggregator for Europeana, and um, the Servicestelle für Digitalisierung, which is um, an institution that helps GLAM institutions to digitize their, um, their content. And we have run that for two years now, in uh, 2014 and 2015, and it was really overwhelming, the results, because we didn't ask the GLAM institutions to give us all their content, but we learned from the Swedes to tell them, um, okay, um, why don't you start with a, with a bit of your content? We don't take it all at, the, at once, but just give us one data set um, which you would declare as free, and the, uh, the coders or the software developers then uh, would create uh, new applications and um, like websites or apps for, for the smartphone and uh, give them under a, f a free license as well for the open source using the open source code. Um, and then we have a workshop, Prepare Your Data, because we got lots and lots of media files through Coding Da Vinci, with over 600,000 media files. But they were under free license, but that doesn't mean that they were into Wikimedia Commons all at once. And you all know how difficult it is to do those mass uploads in, uh, um, in Wikimedia Commons. You have to apply different kind of tools, either uh, the commonest, probably many of you know the commonest, or um, there's Wiki, Wiki, Wiki Cunha, no, Wiki, Wiki Cunha. Wikunia, <laughs> sorry. There's Wikunia, which helps you um, a lot better than commonest with the metadata, if you have like more metadata included to the to the media file, and there's the GLAM wiki tool set, which is a development in between um, some uh, Wikimedia chapters and Europeana, which is rather hard to handle yet. Um, so we tried um, in a workshop to uh, make it m easier for both people from Wikimedia Commons and uh, for GLAM stuff to use the GLAM wiki tool set or Vicunia, and we still have to improve that format. Um, as we will see in a moment. Yeah, our plan for, for the year, um, I won't go into that further. Um, this is like how we present our formats. We have a website, of course. Um, we have the Glam Wiki in, inside Wikipedia. We have brochures. Uh, you can see them in the community village as well. And just now for Wikimania, no, where is that? Oh. I thought that would be there as well. It's not. Okay, but anyway, um, we just added learning patterns um, on all those formats I just show you. Um, we just added them in uh, German, but I promise in the next days we will have a translation into English to be able to share that with you. And now I would like to give the word to Marcus and Raymond, because uh, would you please come over here so people could see you? Because actually, what we would like to share your experience working with GLAM institutions and um, with our experiences, and, uh, in, and so be able to learn from each other to be uh, more um, efficient and have more success in collaborating with, um, with GLAM institutions. So uh, maybe if, as long as you think of your questions, I'd like to uh, start with Raymond. Um, how was uh, how was that pre uh, prepare your data workshop in Frankfurt? How d you you were part of it, and how how did you think? Uh, w how would you think it worked? Thanks, Barbara. Um, it worked. The workshop worked in uh, one perspective, but it was very hard uh, because uh, institutions has given the data and the images in very different formats and uh, we need to analyze it and to convert it it's uh, it was not possible in the it was only a day uh, on a saturday and on a sunday i don't know no, it was a, a weekend uh, sorry yes uh, what a, uh, it was a weekend right um so it is not uh, for everyone to uh, transform uh, any uh, format, uh, an XML into an uh, other format. Uh, you need special uh, programmers, um, programs uh, to do this. And um, 
it was harder than expected. I expected that we can upload some uh, uh, f uh, file sets, but have we done anything? Yes, we have. We have, we have done one, one, one with mineral uh, photos. Yes, um, but it was a lot of work, and uh, we need. Um, let us say so. We need more people with technical understanding, with programmer skilling, uh, to do this. Uh, the people, okay, I have it, but I have other projects too. Uh, uh, but uh, other um, people are, uh, that are active in Glam uh, are good with uh, discussions with museums and institutions, but not uh, in programming. So we need more, either more help from the f f um, chapter or more people here so right i think this uh, especially this technical issue is something where we really need on an international level to collaborate and uh, i know liam is working very hard on on that field and um, so um, maybe you like to share like your experiences and how you deal in your chapters with uh, those technical questions how how do you go around with it is there anybody that like to share his experiences with us. Not Liam, <laughs> but Buselik here. Could you, if I, I, uh, I am from uh, uh, India and I, uh, particip I participated in some of these uh, projects. And I think we have to understand one thing. Uh, we are there for a weekend, but we shouldn't expect that the work is done on that weekend. Uh, and also, we shouldn't measure the success of uh, uh, what we're doing by what has been d uh, done after, let's say, at the weekend or a week after that. Because when you uh, uh, take pictures and so on, you have to process them, you have to uh, upload them to comments, you have to uh, put them into the right categories and so on. And that's not done in that weekend. It's usually sometimes uh, done uh, in the weeks after that. And then you can also get other people to, uh, into the project. So, Raymond, if you say nothing has happened on the weekend, I would disagree with you, you know? <laughs> that's, we, we have to put a point on that. It's not the weekend. <laughs> Yeah, I think that uh, Raymond, he was talking about that prepare your data workshop, which was really focused on technical issues. But um, Marcus, uh, he has been participating in many of those Glamontour stations, and maybe you would like to share more of your experiences from Glamontour. I can do this, but uh, one other thing before. Uh, if I have a big audience, I need to say one other thing before. Uh, we, uh, I have, we have in Germany, a very luxury situation. We have a person like Barbara, <laughs> and uh, I, I need to say one time now, uh, thank you, thank you to her, because we were before Barbara came unstructured, and she uh, she bring us to structure, and now we are so much more focused, uh, so so we can do these things uh, she has shown to uh, to you, and Glamour Tour, yeah, I participate uh, in four or five of these stations and it, it always was fun yes but it was all always uh, also different we had uh, smaller museums and bigger museums and uh, the problem start with uh, simple things you, you need to have internet access and a lot of these museums don't have uh, Wi-Fi and you have to see where comes uh, the internet from then you need a room you have to care uh, about a room for the people who, want, who really want to write articles. It's easy to go around and take pictures, and as you said it, you can work on the pictures uh, later. It's not that easy to write articles later because you get the literature if everything is it's, uh, pre prepared in a good way. You, you get the literature by the museum, you can work there, but you don't have it at home. So. To write articles is uh, not that easy at home. Images uh, are easier. It's a bit uh, different the last time. You were in Stuttgart too, uh, a month ago. Uh, Stuttgart was the first station um, I was attended who produced really a lot of outcome over the images. And we are working s since a month also on articles and so on. And maybe we find the right structure there and we'll go on for this. 
Um, um, maybe you, you would not call it glamour tour, maybe you call it uh, an editaton. Um, so, uh, Tomas, uh, you probably have lots of experiences in organizing editatons in glamour institutions in Poland. Well, not, not really, in fact. <coughs> and uh, we just started, and uh, f our experience is that the main problem is that when you organize something like this, at least in Poland, it's pretty hard to find uh, Wikipedians coming there for various reasons. <coughs> and uh, with uh, newbie e e editors, for example, just students of art or just uh, attendants of the museums, so they write something during the event and after the, uh, this they disappear. So I'm just curious how effective are your projects uh, in, in terms of uh, keeping users longer? <coughs> because you show, you do this, this, this and no statistics at all, right? So uh, that's my question. <laughs> See, some people call me Glambora, and uh, Glambora is not the number figure. Um, well, you know, um, we, we, also, we also evaluate our, our, um, our happenings or our events, and uh, I think one of, one of the um, favorable things you could say about Glamour Tour, it is a format that estimates the engagement of volunteers starting first, you know? Um, I think it's very important for volunteers to be able to have a structure where they can wait, where they can meet, that they get supported by their chapter uh, to arrange a glam happening where they wanted it. Uh, it's it's not like the Wikimedia chapter or me as a as a, a staff people that says, okay, volunteers, now you have to go over there. Now it's uh, the other way around. It's the the glam active people or people that haven't even been active. We had now, for instance, in, in uh, several Glamour tour stations that were run by people that had never done something like that before. And we had um, people that, until then, maybe only started to have um, uh, photos, but now they start to write articles because they find an event where they um, are um, presented with the literature it's only all on their on their reach so they can it find it easier to start to write articles as well in very many of the glamour tour stations we will provide introduction of courses for newbies as well and um, as they then participate in the editaton they establish links matching points mentorships program um, with uh, existing wikipedians with ex uh, wikipedians that are um, have a longer experience and then they can support those newbies. I think that's very, very important, at least in the German Wikipedia. I think it's always good to have a friend, isn't it? It's, it's always good to have a friend, always everywhere. Um, but I would say the Glamour Tour uh, concept is not made for uh, for newbies. Uh, you can have newbies there and, uh, and it's often so you can bring there on an easy way uh, to editing because you have um, uh, offers of a great experience. But Glamour Tour is not, as we do it actually, is not the way to produce a, a lot of new offers. We bring uh, exper experienced authors to a place uh, where they can yeah, do what they like. They write about uh, art, about museums, about technical things in museums or whatever and maybe it would be would be a good idea to do it for newbies uh, one time um, yeah we have some other, but it's not uh, as far as I know not only or especially for newbies uh, the last station in Stuttgart we invited um, members of Wikimedia uh, Germany and we have a lot of members of Wikimedia Germany who are not active uh, and uh, I've heard in the beginning there was a lot of uh, yes we're coming we're interested in and at the end was no 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 person is came no person came so we 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 can't uh, make this pressure to bring them to us so we have to wait. 
Yeah, I think it's as always uh, a matter of being patient and starting over and over again. Um, despite the fact that we have 35,000 members um, in Wikimedia Deutschland, as uh, Markus just said, um, from those 26 in the beginning that said, yeah, we are interested, then when it comes down to the final date, oh, that weekend, that's when my grandma is coming, and sorry, I can't come, but I mean, we'll keep on trying, and I think uh, it's uh, something you can't just try once and, and find out it doesn't work, and then you will never do it again. You have a question. I, I have uh, two things to say. First, um, do, do you guys know One Monthpedia? One Monthpedia, yeah. you, know, you know it. Did you ever think of doing this something like that in, in GLAM, in, in Germany, or, or not yet? And uh, the second, thi yes, second question is that, um, is there a possibility for, for maybe future collaboration between uh, GLAM, Germany, and uh, some 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 other chapter, for instance, Morocco. Um, there is there is the capital. It's called Rabat, and it, uh, the, the government says it's now it's the cultural city of Morocco. And there is there are uh, plenty of uh, places you can see, you can see. And the there's also the chapter in Rabat. So that's maybe something that. Do you think that there's there may be collaboration in the future? Thanks. Okay, um, I was just told we, we are uh, about to end, um, but being the last ones, uh, we might be able to prolong like a little bit longer in order to be able to take a last question and to answer those questions from, from Morocco. Um, first of all, um, uh, we, we have, uh, the, the, there is a community project in Bremen that has applied the QRpedia codes um, very uh, sp spread throughout the city, but not to that extent as Mammutpedia, probably because Bremen is a bit bigger. <laughs> okay, that was the first question. The second question, sure, uh, that's why we are here. We want to share the formats, the experiences we made, that's why we put them into learning patterns in order to be a, um, like maybe a mold for you to use uh, in, in Rabat. And we could also, like Glamontour is now going to be the first time in, in Switzerland, um, yeah, in Davos, with the, um, in the Kirchner Museum, like a, a painter. And we are very happy about that, and uh, we hope we could uh, export it even further, you know, Germany, the big exporter. Now, Andy, please. Thank you. Very interesting talk. Thank you. It's not so much a question as a couple of observations. Uh, I've had the working in Germany with the Museum of Hamburg, where we had QRpedia. Um, I want to encourage people to think very is a glam, uh, and particularly to look at small museums because little villages like this one have small. And some of the things you and they have stories that nobody else can tell. And lots of organizations have an archive. So an archive isn't necessarily an organization that is an archive. So for instance, in the UK, I'm talking to a bank who have the archive of all the they've absorbed for 100 years, and a pharmaceutical company that has absorbed lots of other pharmaceutical companies and all the archives. So think very broadly about who you're going to collaborate with. It's not just the big national or regional museums. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. I think that was a good final word, word for all of us. And thank you, um, all of you, and have a good lunchtime. Bye-bye.